Uh, my name is Dulce Cappadocia. I'm a performer, choreographer, and dance educator. I'm also the artistic director of Silayan Philippine American Dance Company, based in Los Angeles. And Silayan is a Filipino word which means reflection, as in a ray of light diffusing into many different directions and creating patterns of shadows and color. The group was founded by my mother in the late, uh, no, in the early 70s, when I first came to this country as a young child. And she um, gathered a bunch of young people together from our inner city neighborhood, and she pushed away the living room chairs to make way for a dance studio. And from this dance studio, the first Philippine arts organization in Los Angeles was founded. I'm, I'm very interested in, in the performing diaspora process because um, as an artist, I've always been granted through a commission where I am creating work and then presenting. There's like really no process of investigation, um, such as what we did today. I felt that that was stimulating, scary, and also thought-provoking for me in terms of trying to figure out what I'm doing in my new work. So I think that's wonderful that it's also a residency project on top of the commissioning aspect of it. The piece that I'm, um, that I'm working with is called Bihag, and it's spelled B-I-H-A-G. It's a Filipino word for captive. And the piece is centered around the theme of entrapment. It was inspired by an idea that I had looking at YouTube videos of hip hop to nickling. And so um, I'm, I'm actually creating new work that's, that's inspired from this, um, from this process where the centerpiece of BHOG is a violent battle of the hip hop to nickling. And I've actually, um, I've actually created um, my, and conceived my own storyboard where I am, um, I've created a storybook jungle. Um, the impetus of the traditional tinickling, let me go ahead and just explain what that is. The traditional tinickling is, um, is named after the tickling bird that, ride, that preys on the rice stalks of farmers and the farmers try to catch the birds using bamboo traps. In the hip hop tinickling, um, it, it's a cultural phenomenon that's actually taking place all over the nation and the youth have taken the motif of the bamboos and uh, superimposed it with street clothes and urban music. And I thought, you know, what would I do if I were given the opportunity to take this project on as a storyteller? How would I um, create a piece that would, that would basically um, uh, evolve itself around that, that hip-hop to nickling. So I've created an exciting storyboard that actually um, illustrates two jungles. The storybook jungle where the, uh, the tickling bird goddess lives. And for me, because tickling is the epitome of Philippine culture, this tickling goddess represents for me the goddess of legacy. And she is, she in this particular uh, storybook jungle, her role in this jungle is to um, teach her young how to maneuver through these bamboo traps. And then in this other, uh, this other scene that I've created, it's a totally urban jungle that has a totally different movement vocabulary using hip hop. And the two jungles will collide um, as these predator eagles from the storybook jungle fly into the urban jungle and transform into these hip hop gangsters. And what's going to happen is the two forces will come together into a violent hip hop tinkling. Because my work is so narrative driven, I just felt like I couldn't just do a hip hop tinkling, a modern hip hop tinkling. I felt like I needed to justify where that was coming from, you know. And so that's why I started from the very journal idea of, well, what is this piece about? It's about the tickling bird. And who is this tickling bird? So I started asking these questions which I think was really wonderful um, for me because then I came up with this big huge story board which now to me as an artist makes sense and now I can begin to create in my head it's very exciting now I don't know how it's going to turn out choreographically but I'm excited because it's all a process. Tonight. My role as a storyteller is to tell the story in an exciting way and for me it's always been so important that even though I come from a very very different culture my question is when I have an audience member come is what is there something meaningful for them you know in watching my piece even though my my 
my work is culturally specific. Um, I want them to walk away with an inner dialogue or maybe questions about what they, you know, how, how that relates to their own, um, you know, their own life. I want it to have a universal language. I have to tell you the story. I, my mentor was C. Bernard Jackson of the Inner City Cultural Center. And he was a very, um, um, a big, huge force in my life as a young emerging artist. And he always asked me, why do people like to adopt from other cultures when they have, they have their own to explore? And so in, when I think about that, I, I, I am stimulated by all these questions, even though as a human being, I am open to people wanting to go ahead and explore other cultures, even though it's not their own. But I, I sort of wonder, you know, um, yeah, I sort of wonder about that in the back of my mind. I go, hmm, that's interesting. Why would they want to do that? Because for me, um, as a as a dancer that is immersed in my culture because of my mother, my mother was the one that taught me all these dances. There's so you would think that you would think that I would know everything about my traditions, but that's not it at all. The more that I explore and delve into my own tradition, the more questions I ask about it because it's so rich and vast. My work is very narrative driven and um, I have to be able, because my work is not just dance for dance's sake, I have to be able to formulate a story and be inspired by how the story works from beginning to end. So the, my creative process depends on the storyboard that's happening in my head. I have to formulate the story first or be inspired by an outer source, such as a book, a poem, a story. Um, but, but because the, narr the narrative-driven aspect of my choreography is so important, I feel that I need to be inspired by that first before I can start my choreography. And my process is very, um, I would say it's very personal as well. Um, I feel like I always have to borrow from autobiographical information for me to feel inspired. I also draw, um, you know, for my dancers and their abilities. I do, um, I collaborate with them sometimes. I throw out an idea and I say, you know, how do you feel about this? Can you improvise on it? And I extract from their movement vocabulary. The older I get, I feel the vastness and the richness of it that I feel that I need to explore as an artist, and I think that's the that's the one thing that I love about it. It's a discovery of 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 where that leads me.